Okay, so good day guys. So we're here at the part four um, of our cellular operation. This is um, discussing more about breast cancer. So let's get on with the discussion. Let me just remove my face here. Okay, so for breast cancer, um, it says it says here about, from the book that pathological entry, it starts with a genetic alteration of a single cell and later um, it takes several years to develop okay so usually when we say breast cancer okay uh, it usually infiltrates the ductal and the lobular carcinoma it's usually spread to the bones lungs kidneys um, liver and adrenal pleural skin or brain so why Okay, so let's just have a review, diba? Example, um, let's just draw, for example, these are the breast. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah. sorry. Okay. Let me just make a square. Okay, for example, here's the breast. Okay, there's the nipple and B by. Okay, so it's a drawing. Okay, usually the breast is um, composed of the yellow part. The yellow part is your know, adipose tissues or uh, fats. This one is the muscle. Okay. The the chest wall cavities okay so meron okay so there are the ductals usually they are shaped like um, lines like so so mga ganito siya ductals or ducts okay yun yung red na represent na dyan and there is your lobules I'll just represent the lobules by Parang may mga lobules din yun apart sa breast. Okay. So usually, lobules looks like yung parang cluster of um, small circles. Okay. Pwede natin sabihin na na ganun. Lobes. Lobules. Lobes. Okay, usually, siya nagde-develop yung cancer sa breast. Okay, ductal and lobular carcinoma. Okay, so sir, ang tatanungan nyo sir, bakit mabilis siya mag-spread? O kaya, ano, lagi siyang monitor kasi, di ba, yung usually ito, kilikili na to or axillary, your axillary area sa mga girls at sa mga boys, yan. May mga lymph nodes yan. Yung mga violet lymph nodes na dyan yan. Nakakaanat. And rich din siya sa vascularity. Kasi malapit lang din siya sa thoracic area natin. Or rib cage which is highly vascular talaga din. Okay. So, we have here. Ano ba yung mga malapit dito? Siyempre yung spinal cord mo. Bone yan. Lungs, di ba? Nasa thoracic area ka lang din. So, for example, ito yung babines. Ano ba yung malalapit na organs dyan? We have here the lungs. Okay. Yung rib cage mo, thoracic rib cage mo. There, those are bones. Okay. Ano pa yung malalapit? Okay. Yung spinal cord mo. May highway system and going to the brain. So, pwede rin siya magpunta sa brain. Plural skin. Malapit naman din yun sa axillary, yung lymph nodes mo yan, skin. Or, uh, liver and adrenals. Yung adrenal cortex natin, nasa taas lang ng kidneys. Kidneys na dito lang siya. Yan. Pwede siya maapektahan. And at the same time, yung liver natin, opposite side, a very big smooth muscle na pwede rin tubuan at kalata ng um, carcinoma. So, that's why uh, it's really... Uh, infiltrate or it, when metastasis starts, yan yung mga 
usual niya na pinupuntahan ng mga organs. Okay? Let's move on. Okay, so, um, wala talagang specific cause. There is no specific cause. So, when we say specific, it's singled out na cause. But rather, it's more of a combination of genetic, hormonal, and possibly environmental events. Okay, so, kung stress yung babae palagi, or yung patient mo, palagi, nagte-therapy pa siya ng hormonal therapy. Okay, so, it might change the genetic factor over time. May familial uh, history sila ng breast cancer. So, those are the possibilities. Okay, let me just get this emphasis. That's why early detection is better than cure. If ever lymph nodes are unaffected, the prognosis is better. So, ni natin. Okay, so. Para maalala nyo, if unaffected yung lymph nodes, the greater prognosis. Okay, so, uh, bakit? Ganon, as I have explained earlier, pag hindi affected yung lymph nodes mo and localized lang yung tumor or yung cancer, the more, the better the survival rate or the prognosis would be for the patient. Okay, so we have here, the key to improve cure rates is early diagnosis. Again, yun nga, in cancer, in fighting or um, dealing with cancer, early detection is always um, best. Rather than um, detecting it when metastasis has already um, started, okay? We'll be moving here. This is under the microscope. I'll just be passing it, um, passing through this slide, okay? But the most common is, di ba nga? We said earlier, it's more of the ducts and the lobes, okay? So, 80% would be your ductal carcinoma, contributing to 80% of the breast cancer, Okay? Next one would be your lobular carcinoma that contributes 10 to 15% of um, breast cancer. Medullary carcinoma would be 5. Mucinous uh, carcinoma, 3. Tubular ductal carcinoma would be 2. And inflammatory carcinoma, which is less common, would be um, under 1%. Okay. We've explained earlier na lang din yan. So, take note na lang din dito. Sa first two, it might go out into your quiz. You're infiltrating the ductal carcinoma and infiltrating lobular carcinoma. Okay, for the risk factor, syempre, higher yung risk sa females. Why? As, as well, increasing age. Uh, why does increasing age uh, place a risk factor? Usually, increasing age is hormonal imbalance. imbalance okay so for example um, the patient has been diagnosed previously with breast cancer or has breast fat, um, cancer in the family it increased the risk factors okay and in under genetic mutation usually this is tested your brca1 or brca2 okay breast cancer 1 and breast cancer 2 Okay, for hormonal factors, this is specified. If ever um, the patient study shows that uh, women before 12 years of age of menstruation are highly risk for breast cancer. Nearly um, parity. Okay, so also first breast after 30, it increases the risk for cancer. Late menopausal stage, which is after 55 years, and people undergoing um, people undergoing hormonal therapy. Okay, so. Okay, again, why you've been from your OB. Again, let's review. Early menstruation, before age of 12. Newly parity. Uh, 
which is a term in OB that is a condition or state which the woman has never given birth to a child or never carried a pregnancy. Okay. First birth after 30 years of age, late menopausal and hormonal therapy. Okay. So those are the risk. Okay. So for the risk factors continued. Okay. Um, exposure to ionizing radiation. So radiation causes cancer during adolescence and early childhood. So check if you're um, exposed for ionizing radiation or any types of radiation na lang din. Okay, obesity, overweight, and uh, above your ideal body weight. Okay, alcohol intake, um, beer, wine, or liquor. Kasi over time, uh, those chemicals, di ba? May chemical, we've talked about chemical as a risk factors. Um, over time and prolonged consumption of this um, products would take effect and then uh, further on um, evolve on uh, different change in your body system and a high fat diet okay moving on so what are the things that you uh, must tell your client or do yourself as women or ladies to prevent um, Breast cancer. First is protective factors, regular or vigorous exercises. It decreases your body fat, therefore decreasing your risk of having cancer. Okay, this is not mandatory, guys. Baka mamaya, mag ano naman ha. So, okay, planned. Let's, let's just put here planned. Pregnancy before the age of 30. Okay, this is not a creed. This is not ano, but more on uh, what they call this health teaching, okay, and then breastfeeding. So breastfeeding has ano, but this one needs to be planned, okay. So yeah, prevention strategies, um, long-term surveillance or mo monitor mo yung uh, breast examination starting at age twenty-five and yearly. Mammography, mammogram, or MRI. Yeah. If ever, um, test of breast cancer 1 and 2 is VRCA1 and VRCA2 is noted in previous test. Okay, so as early, they would be advised if ever you're be, you've been diagnosed with the um, early stage of cancer. Chemo prevention before disease is used. The drug of choice would be Tamoxifen, okay. So, for example, as well, uh, you, um, the doctors or collaboratively, the doctors in hand in hand with the nurse would be um, doing prophylactic mastectomy. So, this is mastectomy is a removal of the breast. This is risk reducing, or other terms, it's risk reducing mastectomy, okay. Um, don't you know that Angelina Jolie has undergone uh, bilateral mastectomy already? Because in their family, uh, Angelina Jolie, uh, do you know her? Um, she is one of uh, great actresses in Hollywood. She's made many films. But I guess the familiar film to you is Maleficent. Yan. Siya yung si Maleficent dan. Yan. Uh, you would be observing or if you would read documents, she has undergone already mastectomy, bilateral. When you say bilateral, both breasts, um, they remove na yung ano, as part of preventive um, or prophylactic mastectomy kasi their family has history. It's early on, she, ha she has been, uh, what do you call this, diagnosed with tumor and she opted for bilateral mastectomy para hindi siya kamalat. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Generally, lesions are non-tender. Fixed and hard with irregular borders. So, it occurs more in the upper outer quadrant. So, sige. Light time. <laughs> okay, so, sa ang part daw? Ng, ano, for example, this. Okay, so, this is your right side of the patient. Ito ha, right side ng patient and left side of the patient. Example. Yeah. Okay, pag sinabing um, right outer, usually this is, okay, let's, 
non-tender, for example, may bukol, nagkakaroon ng bukol, usually it's on the right upper part. Yan, dito sa mga points na to. Okay, right outer, upper quadrant. So, this is the upper quadrant of the breast. Up, down, up, down, upper, outer. So, outer, this is your outer. Outer, I think parang midline natin. Okay, so usually, lumps would be on this location or parts. Okay. So, uh, while doing self-breast examination, usually, yan kinakapa from the upper outer and then paloob, di ba? So, I will be discussing more of that kasi part na banda siya ng health assessment before and we have videos for that. Okay, some women have no symptoms of palpable lumps but have an abnormal mammogram. So, uh, what are uh, the signs there? Kasi bakit hindi na-detect? Sige, try natin muna to. Okay, so advanced signs may include skin dimpling. May parang ano siya. Um, okay, so yan yung ano lang natin. Sampling natin. Or I'll just make a square. So sometimes, women have no symptoms. No palpable lump. Pero pag nag-mammogram, dun siya nagkakaroon ng abnormalities. So what is mammogram? So, for example, this is a woman. Here's her breast. Um, her breast gets um, tested in between two slides. The lower slide has a film. And then upper has a light on it that would take shots and have x-ray basically of the breast. Parang basically, x-ray lang siya specified for the breast. That's what you call mammogram. Okay? So, hindi man siya makikita by palpation, pero by uh, the test of mammogram, they would be seeing lumps or um, tumor like, uh, what they call this, um, structures upon mammogram or squeezing or pressing ng breast dun sa plate. Dun nakikita. Okay? So, advanced signs may include skin dimpling. So, sino may dimple sa inyo? Parang makikita nyo na parang depressed yung sa side, side na yun. May parang palubog na part ng skin. Diba? Dimples, katulad ng dimples. Nipple retraction. Okay? And skin ulceration. Ulceration, parang may mga na ano siya. Sugat-sugat na area. Okay. Next one. Okay, so here are the assessment or further diagnostics. We have first the biopsy. Usually, this one is um, getting some uh, cell samples. Okay. And then we have also your tumor staging and analysis of additional prognostic factors. Okay. We have also our chest x-ray, CT scan, MRI, PET scan, and bone scans. To see the extent, if ever um, metastasis is already considered, we also have our complete blood cell count as part of the diagnostic measures. Okay, we just want to start here. Okay, so two more markers. You have your CEA and CA15-3 and uh, persino carcino embryonic antigen okay and we have also our staging of breast cancer depending yun dun sa ano okay for the surgical management we have the modified radical mastectomy total mastectomy breast conserving surgery okay or lumpectomy we have the sentinel lymph node biopsy and lastly, the breast construction. So, let's just focus on um, the two, the modified radical and the total mastectomy. Okay. Where can I draw? Okay, I'll just draw here in the side. Okay, for example, and Oh, 
madali. Sorry. Here we have two types of ano. Okay. So, for number one, number two. Okay, when we say modified, what's the difference between the modified radical mastectomy and total mastectomy? Okay, so let's first define the, them. MRM is the removal of the entire breast tissue, including the nipple areola complex and a portion of the auxiliary lymph node. Okay, next one for total mastectomy, or sometimes they call this one simple mastectomy. It's the, the removal of the breast nipple areola complex but does not include the axillary lymph node. So the difference between these two, when we say modified radical mastectomy, it includes your lymph nodes. Pag sinabi natin total mastectomy, minus the lymph nodes. Yun na yung tatandaan nyo. Okay, so for example, for number one, total, total radical mastectomy, ang tatanggalin niyan is itong buo plus yung lymph node sa kiligili. Or depende, means nag-extend pa yan hanggang dito. So, yan, tinatanggal yung portion na yan. Okay. So, you would be seeing your client after surgery na ganyan na siya, tapos may flap na yan ng scar. Okay. Usually ganyan. Or sometimes, andito rin yung ano yan. Depending on how yung extent or structure ng ano, yung breast. When we say Total mastectomy, hindi kasama yung lymph node. For example, this is the lymph node. They would be just removing portion. Okay. Yan lang yung extent niya. Usually ganyan. Tapos ito. Okay. So, that's the difference. Major difference between the two. This one is your number one. Including the lymph node modified radical mastectomy or MRM. And your total mastectomy with the year number two. Okay, so we have uh, breast um, conserving surgeries. This one is your just the removal of the part. So, sample na natin the number three. Kasi tatamad na mag-drawing. Okay, so, for example, there's just a lump here. Ang gagawin nila dyan, bubutasan nila. Excise. Kukunin nila yung lump. Di ba biopsy nila? And then, isasarado na lang nila. Okay. So, yun lang yung ano, lumpectomy. Parang basic lang siya. Or segment. Okay? Okay. Sentinel lymph node biopsy. Yun nga lang. Tinutusok nila yan and they get samples for that to detect early. And breast reconstruction. Remove and then mag-ano sila ng um, ng uh, reconstruction or parang Gano sila plastic surgery para matanggal lang din after. Okay, next one. Okay, so for the medical management, yung mga sikat na sikat, you have their external beam radiation and chemotherapy. Okay, this one, typically the whole breast radiation but partial breast radiation to lumpectomy or site alone is also performed. I-expose yan sa radiation therapy yung breast na yun. Okay. And then we say chemotherapy. This is your drugs or given through your IV lines. Okay. Uh, this is um, given to prevent the microstatic spread of the disease. Ayan. Ito yung mga ano natin. Yung cyclophosphamide or cyto cytoxan, your methotrexate, fluoracil, um, Anthracetylene-based regimens. Okay, yan yung mga ano natin. So, just take note of the chemotherapeutic drugs. Okay. So, it's either radiation or chemotherapy. Next one. Uh, for example, homo hormonal therapy. So, may work out yan. Uh, they would be checking the progesterone and estrogen level of female. The more na mababa yung progesterone and estrogen levels, usually they would be giving this as replacement. So, usually, they would be given tamoxifen or soltamox and anastazole, arimidex, okay? And then, another one would be targeted therapy, which is your tantrozumab and bevacizumab. Okay, bevacizumab and um, tantrozumab. 
Uh, we, we would not be discussing of more of pharmacologic ano dito kasi um, pharmacology evolves in um, cancer treatment and usually they they are used in combinations or sometimes they are given in specified um, doses talaga din. So let's not focus there. Let's just focus on in their independent nursing management. Okay, so as a nurse, what you would be expecting to assess the health history so that you could rule out the risk factors patient's reaction to the diagnosis usually this one the depression would sink in the denial anger um, bargaining okay would come into this one um, ability and assess the coping skills of the patient okay so if ever um, she might need support system or involve the family um, check for her knowledge deficit what she does not know about the treatment okay and the presence of discomfort okay the next one would be your nursing diagnosis this is your preoperative in yeah, knowledge deficit about the planned surgical treatment anxiety because of the diagnosis and possible future plans fear related to the treatment and changes especially when um she is fearful, especially mga adolescent to uh, middle-aged people. Uh, removal of a body part is a big deal to them kasi ma-alter yung body image nila. Okay, and another is risk for ineffective coping. Um, she might get depressed. She might uh, go into substance abuse because of the diagnosis or other things. Okay, and then decisional conflict related to the decision. Um, treatment options usually this one would be the stage where they would deny it and then go for second or third opinion magpapatest pa sila sa ibang clinic and nahirapan sila to decide what to do okay for the management okay next one for post-operative ito yung kakatapos mo operahan matanggalan ng breast yung female or other surgical management for it okay so usually pain and discomfort it's the number one of the list masakit yun kasi um like dito sensitive ang chest area and it has a lot of pain perceptors as well so pain and discomfort is um sure as a nursing diagnosis descent uh, disturbed sensory perception okay because it's also a nerve rich area okay so it would be spreading uh to your to the arm to the other breast or chest wall yung ano uh, sensory perception dyan. okay another is disturbed body image as i have said earlier okay uh, risk for impaired adjustment okay so mahirapan siya mag adjust kasi yung lifestyle would be a different kind of thing and last but not the least is um, self-care deficit because related to partial imm immobility of the upper extremity on the operative side syempre um, may opera ka dun sa side na yun, or the patient has an operation on that side, the raising and movement of her arm would be a little bit uh, restricted at that point of time post-operative. So, uh, self-care, especially if uh, that hand is her dominant hand, uh, expect a little bit of self-care deficit there. Mas mahirapan siyang gumawa na activities of daily living niya. Okay, next one. Okay, so for planning and goals, syempre, ang goals mo is based on your problems. For example, knowledge deficit, so you increase the knowledge. Okay, um, there is fear, anxiety, and stress, so you need to address and reduce it. Okay, since there is um, inability of coping and deciding, you improve or um, involve the family in decision-making abilities and there is pain so you need to do pain management okay improving of coping abilities diversional activities um doing a hobby that he or she really like just to cope up with the situation attend seminars and empowerment for breast cancer um survivors okay and at the same time we don't want any complications like sepsis or uh, later on, if mapabayaan, uh, further metastasis of the cancer. Okay, 
So, for pre-operative interventions, okay. Okay, to sum up the slide, okay. It's more of the knowledge and exercise and pain management. Okay, so review treatment options for the knowledge, expectations on what uh, will happen before, during, and after. Okay, for the exercise, decrease arm and shoulder mobility and demonstrate ROM prior to discharge. So, initially, it's immobilization and then later on, it's um, bringing back to optimal function. And then last but not the least is pain medications and comfort measures provided. So, what I um, always emphasize, do your non-pharmacologic or your independent nursing and then you go to your collaborative or your pharmacologic okay next one so post-operative to sum up this slide okay it's more of coping more on mental part and then it's more of uh, referrals okay so you're reducing fear anxiety and improving coping so it's more of your mental um, stability okay coping and then uh, realistic expectations um, this one is a little bit hard part especially for the patient but acceptance diba? she would go under denial na bakit ako pa yung na, na, nagkaroon ng ganito, bakit ako pa yung operahan, anger, nagagalit yan nurse, huwag mo ako kalapin, masama yung ano ko ngayon uh, bargaining, sana hindi na lang nangyari sa akin to, sana sa ibang tao na lang or sana may iba pang way na pwedeng gawin to, okay tapos uh, acceptance na lang din later after niya ma-realize yung bargaining yan, okay, so Provide resource treatment facilities and breast um, cancer community. So, this is your referral. So, may mga facilities na nagkikater for treatment if ever she would still undergo chemotherapy. And at the same time, there are societies and cancer communities that um, has uh, encouraging words to build them up, the spirits up. Okay? Or, uh, tawag dito, parang group on helping each other and strengthening each other so as a healthcare provider um, at least we could repair them to those uh, communities that could help your patient okay, next one okay um, for preoperative interventions again decision making usually weighing the risk supporting the decision okay understanding the options okay this one is checking on the mental status of your patient and helping her to decide how would you feel what are your considerations or um would you go rather for breast reconstruction and would you go, rather go to consider radiation treatment okay post-operative again ulit ulit pain so assessment um, medication for pain okay so usually the pa patient would be feeling um, uncomfortable during the first days of uh, pain but we need to pay taper down kasi baka mamaya maging uh, dependent naman sa pain medicine patient nyo so at least uh, we would be observing the pain patterns for the few days after the surgery Okay, so evaluate the surgery pain versus potential complications like infection or hematoma and alternate met, uh, methods of pain which uh, includes taking warm showers and destruction. Next one. Okay, so managing post-op sensations. Okay, so post-op sensations would include tenderness, soreness, numbness. Okay, Ting uh, tightness, pulling, twinges. Okay, and other phantom sensation after mastectomy. Okay, so just remember this one. These are the possible sensations. Okay, 
Okay, so for post-operative interventions, we have promoting positive body image. Okay, at least the patient would be ready to see the incision and gentle encouragement. Uh, privacy, acknowledgement of feelings. If ever she is not comfortable with one uh, or both of the breast lost, breast reconstruction or plastic surgery could also be a thing. And temporary breast form to place in her bra para at least same pa rin yung ano yung features or physiological um physiological features na makikita ng ibang tao assessment and coping identifying identifying and utilizing support community resources discussion of concerns and mental health usually depression after nito is high so at least talking diverting your patient and uh, at least uh, eventually helping her accept yung situation. Okay, so post-operative interventions, we have here monitor and management complication, encourage movement, kasi hindi na lang pwedeng palaging nakahiga yung patient. So, encourage movement so that circulation would return and at least hindi magiging um, stagnant lang in bed your pa yung patient. Elevate affected part of the arm above the heart. Okay, and refer to therapist. Okay, so proper incision care. This is more of the wound care. And watch out for signs and symptoms. If there's discharge, smell on the part of the operation site, uh, report it immediately. And apply compression to wrap around the incision as ordered to avoid bleeding. And at the same time, parang protection na rin as well. Okay, so next one would be client education. This one is mental preparation and wound care as well as the knowledge. Okay, so patient's readiness to assume self-care. Watch out for the incision site, wound care. Report for any infection, hematoma, the bleeding around the site, seroma, their serum, or discharge, we're discharge on the site. The arm is swelling, so parang manas. Makikita nyo, if you would compare the arm to the other arm. For example, here is the operated side. And then it grew. Tapos maliit lang din yung kabila. For example, report it immediately kasi there is swelling. It's either there's uh, complications or fluid overload. Or parang hindi nagagalaw yung arm, so it needs to be moved. Pain management and arm exercises. Okay, hand and arm care, drainage management. For example, they have JP there or Jackson Pratt. So you have to take care of that as well. Activity restrictions. Ano yung mga hindi pwedeng gawin? So strenuous exercises. Um, initially, after operation, you can put IV sites on uh, the affected side for example this is the right side of the patient avoid uh, using it as IV lines use the other arm because it may cause nga, swelling or pamamaga on that area involvement of family members routine health screening for cancer and reinforce the needs um, initially critical yan for three to six months post operation to um, do a care plan Okay, so exhibited outcomes, it's more of the knowledge, verbalization, coping, okay, and decision making, okay, knowledge, coping, decision making, and pain management, okay, usually yan naman yung mga ano natin dito, okay, sa wound care, dyan lang siya umiikot, knowledge, um, coping, Decision making, pain management, and wound care. Okay, for the expected outcomes. Okay, so list the signs and symptoms of infection and report it immediately. Hindi yung pinatagal nyo, tapos hindi nyo inassess, hindi nyo rin report. So take note that of that as a nurse. Verbalize feelings regarding changes in body self image, coping. So participates actively in self care activities, uh, back to normal ADLs and independence para sa patient mo. Okay, so um, knowledge and recommendations and no complications. Okay. So, we're going to be discussing 
we just show my face first so good morning uh, so good day and we're back we're going to be discussing this one the cancer of the cervix in the uterus okay so we'll be going to this slide okay so predominantly it's um caused by the squamous cell and adenocarcinoma so when i say adenocarcinoma again the body you remember the table before it's because of your gl gl glandular cell and diba remember we have the benign um, tumors and the malignant tumors the glandular cell malignant tumors is adenocarcinomas diba it's called adenocarcinoma so i'll just give emphasis on this one okay it can be detected by pap smear test and prevalent it's the third most common reproductive cancer in women estimated to affect more than one uh, eleven thousand women in the u.s okay risk factors would be uh, multiple sex partners smoking and chronic cervical infection or exposure to hpv hpv okay so let me just emphasize here on squamous cells sir what no po ulit yung squamous cells okay let's just go Roughly, yung ano, ano, vagina. This one would be your. Okay, at this fresh pa is OB, di ba? Okay, san tama yung ano. Okay, here, then you have your ovaries here for both sides. Okay, kung naalala nyo yung ano nyo sa OB. I guess you've discussed this also, so I'll just go in, in passing. So here is your uterus. Here is your ovary. And here is your um I'm sorry. Uterine wall. And your cervix is here. Dit is ano between cervix. Okay, and this is the vagina of the female. Okay, and yung ano yan. Okay, so this part is made up of two types of cells. Okay, is the uterine wall and the cervical area is made up of two kinds of cells. We have your glandular cells. And you have your squamous cells. They are the ones if uh, affected. They are the they are the cells that evolves and mutates and gets the uh, genetically altered. So, sir, bakit usually combination niya ng cervix and uterine? Again, yung proximity nila sa isa isa. This is your cervix and this is your uterus. Malapit lang din sila. Tapos yung wall, uterine wall, di ba? and then din lang siya okay plus this is a vascularly rich area okay so mabilis din siya kung kumanat okay multiple sex partners this is usually chemical and physical affectations in this factor smoking it prolonged smoking can change uh, what do you call this your genetical structure in a long period of time and here we go chronic ha, hindi siya yung halimbawa nagka-UTI ka, yun na yun ma'am, baka may, ka Alice, may cancer ako or ano, it's uh, chronic cervical infection okay. so that's that so clinical manifestation, usually symptomatic siya but the sad part is, it would be only diagnosed usually sa advanced stage na why? kasi yung advanced stages of the manifestations include vaginal discharge usually water watery uh, gradually increasing in amount initially parang konti lang siya stain and then later on madami na siyang discharge it's dark false smelling kasi there is death already of the tissue or sometimes the tumor is already infected so late game na um, it might be because of the irregular bleeding even after menopause there is pain 
or bleeding after sexual intercourse or mild trauma, which never usually happens. If ever yun yung ano, pag narinig nyo yun sa history nung inyong patient, consider also this one. There is leg pain, okay, dysuria, difficulty in urinating, rectal bleeding, and edema on extremities. Manasim pa ah, hindi alam kung bakit. Okay naman yung x-ray, okay naman din yung circulation pag chinek. So, this might be also a cost kasi late advanced stage na. And excruciating pain in the back of legs due to nerve involvement. So, sa likod ng legs, masakit siya, nagra-radiate kasi nerve area din yan. Diba? Sensory, sensitive yung perineal part and it has nerves connecting all over until the back of the legs. Kaya, usually excruciating pain yan in the back. Okay, so what are the assessment and diagnostic methods? You have your pap smear and biopsy. This one is they're going to do a swab or smear in the cervical and uterine area of a female. Okay, and biopsy as well. Okay, they would be using x-rays, laboratory tests. There are special examination, the punch biopsy and the colpox, colposopy. Okay, and we have here the DNC. Dilatation and curettage. Kinakayod nila yung uterine wall. Tapos tatanggalin nila. Or for yung parang common term sa Pilipinas, yun, rinaraspa. Di ba? Yan yung ano nila. And then, CT scan and MRI for visualization. And then, meron tayong IV uro uro urography. They would be um, infusing IV dye. And then, they would visualize the... Um, parang genitourinary pattern or track of the female and we have also cystography visualization of the, the cyst PET scan and barium x-ray studies okay for the medical management so initially this is staging to eliminate the extent of treatment and for planning further Okay, then we have also conservative treatments because usually late game or advanced stage na is the diagnose. You have to monitor it. Monitoring, usually testing. Okay, we have your cryotherapy. This one is the freezing. Nalagay nila sa ano? Malamig na lugar or they induct um, cold therapy in that area. Laser therapy. Okay, we have also loop electrosurgical excursion procedure colonization, and pre-invasive -in uh, cervical cancer, simple hysterectomy, yung tinatanggal yung ating uh, yung parts of the reproductive system, and radical uh, tracheolectomy. Okay? We'll be discussing there late, that later. Okay. So, when you say it's invasive cancer, the treatments would be surgery, radiation, therapy. This is the radiation therapy for it. Okay. Brachytherapy. And platinum-based agents and combination of approaches. Okay. So, for recurrent cancer, yung umulit-ulit, pelvic excentration. Okay. So, for nursing, we'll just be focusing on this one. This is the health history physical and pelvic examination of laboratory studies, patient's psychosocial support and response. For the nursing diagnosis, we have your anxiety, anxiety to cancer, disturbed body image, uh, related to altered fertility and fears, okay, pain as well. Related to the surgery and knowledge deficit kasi yung mga treatment and management. So, dun lang mong focus ang ating nursing management. Okay, so planning and goals. Relief from anxiety. Acceptance or loss. So, the key is acceptance. Uh, absence of pain or discomfort. Your pain management. Increase in knowledge of self-care requirement. And absence of complications. Okay, here just more specific management for relieving anxiety. Determine how the experience affects. So, this is your active listening and therapeutic communication. Allow verbal um, verbalization of feeling. Identify the strengths. Explain the pre and post procedures. 
giving knowledge empowers the patient, therefore relieving his or her his or her anxiety. Pala. We're talking about cervical, so this is uh, most likely women. Okay, so for improved body image, the feeling of undergoing hysterectomy, the concerns about childbearing, loss of femininity, and impact to sexual relation, depression, heightened emotional sensitivity, kasi it's not because of the loss, but more of the hormonal imbalance. Exhibit concern and willingness to listen. Okay, for the uh, cure for pain, and yeah. assess intensity, administer analgesics, resume food and intake gradually. Because this is part of your abdominal area, so peristalsis or movement of your bowels is affected. That's why resumption of food and fluid intakes must be gradually um, resumed. Hindi siya yung biglang papakainin mo agad kasi magiging feeling bloated. Tapos yung lower part mo is hindi nagpa-function pa ng ayos. So, uh, later na lang din i-schedule yung food. So, early ambulation, movement uh, promotes peristalsis. Therefore, it helps in uh, early recovery. Rectal tube for abdominal distension. For example, uh, the procedure had, has um, affected your gut or your gastrointestinal system especially the large intestine there are times na um, there is difficulty of passing stools therefore there would be insertion of rectal tube at least to pass gas or to pass um, stool at least marirelieve yung constipation patient so monitor and manage complications here we have hemorrhage one of the complications excessive bleeding so Perineal pad count. So, pag may nababasang pad count, you would be um, weighing them. So, at least you could have an estimate on how much bleeding or discharges the patient has. Vital signs check especially for your heart rate, your blood pressure, temperature. Okay. So, your vital signs. Kaya nga siya siya ng vital signs. Okay. Pero usually, pag hemorrhage ang pinag-usapan, you are more focused on the heart rate and the bleeding. Uh, why? The heart rate is increased kasi nag-cope siya na mag-supply ng blood towards certain part because of the losses. And then later on, the BP because hypovolemia, yung uh, excess fluid loss due to bleeding is important. At least kung biglang bumagsak yung BP, consider having um, changes in your fluid status. So, those are the two vital signs that are um, monitored here. Abdominal, or dress abdominal dressing for drainage. Okay, so check yung dressing if it's soap. And if ever there are Jackson Prats or any drains, check it for output. Activity guidelines to promote healing and prevent bleeding. So, yun. So, monitor manage complication. This is deep vein thrombosis or DVT. Use elastic compression stockings. Okay, for example, there are vascularities there. And, um... We don't want any throwing of embolus or fat uh, deposition there. So, we use elastic compression stockings. Okay, so changing of position, early ambulation, so that there would be no stasis of blood. Okay, monitor leg pain. Avoid prolonged pressure on the knees and immobility. So, it's just a balance of rest and exercise, light exercise right after the treatment. Okay, so monitor and uh, manage complications. The bladder dysfunction, so the brain bladder, urinary bladder din ng babae is within the premises of your um, yung, uh, lower quadrant of your abdomen. So, check if it's altered. So, ititignan nyo kung umiihi yung patient nyo. Monitor the output. If the patient is on polycatheter, uh, make sure that the urine output is more than or equal to 30 cc per hour. Okay, assess abdominal distension. Um, if you have your uh, measuring tape, measure initial abdominal distension. And watch out if the bladder is full, if the catheter is removed. So, you could also palpate that one and see if it's distended. So, initially, you have to do a baseline and... Makikita nyo naman yun while you do your assessment. If the patient feels bloated, you would be seeing the um, slope on the abdominal area change. Okay? 
So we have also initiate measures to encourage voiding. Okay. Client education. Okay. For example, um, there is no menstrual cycle for the patient. The doctor would uh, order or consider need for hormonal therapy. Okay, so if the patient is at home, home from the hospital, usually uh, instruct the patient to check the incision, note for any changes in color, discharge, or fall smell, and ask him or her to report to the surgeon if there is something um, peculiar or different about the surgery site. Okay, resume activities gradually. No sitting for a prolonged period of time. Okay, so shower rather than a tub soaking. So this is post-op to avoid um, soaking on the site. Uh, encourage showering rather than having a bath on the soaking tub. Avoid lifting or straining or sexual intercourse or diving until advised. So post-op to. So we need to uh, relieve or avoid lifting and straining. And sexual intercourse because um, intra-abdominal pressure yan. it causes straining and furthermore might cause bleeding when pressure is applied to that part of the region okay driving is also a form of prolonged seating because that's why um, yung positional uh, holding and saka yung weight bearing dun sa um, lower abdominal area is not advised unless prescribed already by the doctor. So that's why follow up is also important. Next one, expected outcomes. Okay, so tana naman tayo ulit sa decrease in anxiety and emotional support. Okay, um, at least she has uh, verbalized improved in body image. She feel, feels confident about herself. Scars are there. But she's um, willing to see those scars. And the scars tell the story. Okay. Um, from unbearable pain, at least your outcome would be there is minimal pain or no pain at all. Okay. Last but not the uh, second to the last is verbalize the knowledge and understand the self care. These are the things that I will do. Assess the knowledge once in a while and try letting your patient, if ever you're doing a follow up, uh, demonstrate on how to do self-care and experience no no complication okay okay so for the cancer of the ovary yun niya this since magkakatabi lang din sila what I've drawn earlier cervix uterus ovaries let's just have a quick, quick sketch here okay so, bakit nandiyan yan? Nagkakaroon ng cancer dito. Same is true kasi um, when the cancer usually metastasize from the uterus going to the ovaries. Yan. Actually, it's affected na rin lang din agad. Okay, so, ovarian cancer. If um, cervical and uterine cancer is the second most uh, deadly reproductive cancer, this one would be your first. It's the leading cause of gynecological deaths in the U.S. Okay? It's very difficult to dis, uh, detect because it's much more deeper. Unlike this one, if they do a pop smear, they would be gathering um, samples. It's easier, but it's very hard to, ano, kasi <coughs> to assess for ovarian cancer because it's deep within. And another thing why it's difficult to detect there's no definitive causative factor. It suddenly also develops. It might be a metastasis. Okay? Or it's either it develops, the tumor develops directly there. Okay? So, epithelial in origin, which is 90% of the cases. Okay? Protective factors for ovarian CA. If the lady gets pregnant and um, if ever she is taking oral contraceptives okay for the risk factors history of breast cancer another thing is familial history of ovarian cancer older age low parity and obesity okay go to the next slide increase in abdominal girth these are the signs 
you have um, pelvic pressure, yung parang sumasakit din palagi, surely bloated and flatulent ang feeling, there is abdominal and back pain, there's indigestion and constipation, there is urinary urgency, bigla na lang maiihi, increased weight size, sudden, okay, there's leg pain, pelvic pain. Um, there's also big GI symptoms, which are sometimes um, gastritis or sometimes um, abdominal pain. Okay, that's, that's why it's big. And there is um, palpable ovaries in postmenopausal women. When palpation is done, the gynecologist or the nurse would be able to palpate the ovaries on both sides or on the affected side. Okay. So, how will you assess it? By annual, so two times a year, do pelvic examination, TVU or transvaginal ultrasound, and two more markers, the CA125 elevated. Okay. Okay, so we go to the management. Okay. So, the surgical choice is ooperectomy. Okay. So, the preoperative workout would be barium enema or colonoscopy to assess the GI, um, MRI, ultrasound, chest x-ray, IV urography, and CT scan. Okay, tumor staging can be performed as a direct treatment na rin lang. And chemotherapy, liposomal and intraperitoneal delivery ang uh, approach. Okay, for surgical management, we have TABSO. This stands for Total Abdominal Abdominal hysterectomy bilateral oophorectomy or in layman's term tatanggalin yung parehas na ano um, tatanggalin parehas na ovaries ng patient. Okay? So, there's also tumor debunking para aortic pelvic limb node sampling, biopsy, and cytologic washing. Okay? So, this is just the same. Okay. So, I won't be um, emphasizing on this, especially on the management kasi it's just the same as well as dun sa ano, kasi more on coping, knowledge, um, anxiety dealing, pain management, and at the same time, it also deals with um, the post-operative care and family involvement and support system right after, and refer referral systems. Okay, so maybe that ends our um, lecture for today. Our part 5, we would be discussing as a preview, cancer of the stomach, yes, the cancer, Okay, and why it would be, why how rampant is it, okay, who is the affected population later on. So I hope you learned something today, and um, if you're not um, very much convinced, you could do further studying on your own, and I really encourage that, at least you would be learning more. If you have questions, don't hesitate to message me. Have a nice day, and keep safe everyone.